previously on the Goblin Market. After saving Olivia Miller's daughter from bandits that turned out to be Kingsmen, supposedly in cahoots with Gregor, or at least someone piloting him, Deanfa decides to figure out what's going on. And that's when things go from weird to dangerous. Gregor takes control of his own body while being piloted and attacks and defeats Deanfa slash Busk. Rather than finishing off the downed Ream, Gregor eats a goblin forget-me plum, which astonishingly seemed to affect both Ebus and Gregor, or whoever was piloting him, which wiped a whole hour of their memory. What is going on with this fucking contract? Is Sheba the rogue Kyber now living as a raven behind this? Is it Vunk, the corrupt Kyber who killed his own brother? Or is it Gregor himself or something deeper and darker buried in the young man? Now they're on their way to Hardat City to meet Jax, the owner and rules keeper of the marketplace. But are they traveling with a bomb that could go off at any moment? Why did he want to wipe his own memory? Find out today on the Dungeon Dads. To the river they tread, only to be swept away. Morning and evening you may hear the cry, candies and berries and baubles to try. Sweet to the tongue and sound to the eye, but heed words of caution when you then decide to come by. Come by, get, come by, get, come by, get, come by, get, come by, get. Just beware the Goblin Market. Hey everybody and welcome back to the podcast. You're listening to the Goblin Market on the Dungeon Dads Network. As always, I'm your yes, DM, baby. Tom Blaylock, and I'm joined by John Watson playing Deanfa, the recently defeated Kyber. <laughs> What's up, John? It's messed up, man. I was just trying to scare the dude. You didn't have to cast spells on me. Hey, man, grappling is aggressive. Like, dude was just protecting himself. You did say you were hostile. I was hostile. Yeah, I, I was skeeved out. The guy was trying to control minds. That's not cool. <laughs> Only Tim, I can do that shit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Tim Carr playing the completely dominated uh, sub, uh, Evis. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Let me unzip my uh, bodysuit here. <laughs> I'm gonna need to know what the safe word is. Uh, oh man, this is just a little story. First party I ever went to in New York. First party ever. It was like the perfect welcome to New York. There was a guy rolled up in a rug with a sign over him saying, please stomp on me. And then below that in tiny little letters, it said, but only if you're wearing heels. <laughs> awesome it oh. was a, it was amazing it was just like in the middle of the room i was like oh man and i was walking over he goes not you man not you <laughs> yeah. wow and you were like what if i put these heels on, heels on? Yeah. What if I put these heels on? <laughs> yeah. but like i was like this is new york this is exactly what i thought it would be <laughs> <laughs> well, honey, it's the big city. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Frank playing the super, super optimistic, cocky Charnak. <laughs> What's up, Sam? Listen, it's not cocky if you can back it up. <laughs> That's right. Which means it remains to be seen whether any of this is cocky. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, um, in the bonus, we talked a little, a little bit about this is that, you know, when, if we're not going to like wave our hands, not wave our hands. Yeah. Yeah. Hand wave. We can all wave our hands. If we're not going to wave high. our hands and give you a long rest, you actually don't have the resources to dominate Gregor right now and, and take over the role mm -hmm. of Kuiper for him, pilot for him. Um, so, and, and that if we're out in the field, I probably wouldn't want to waste my one casting of it on him anyway. Anyway, especially because you're tuned in and you think you probably have a problem with him. Like you, like you guys have had your little powwow, you've gotten together, you, you've decided there's a problem, except, and if, if everyone remembers this from last episode, Tim's character, Ebus has had his memory has had her memory wiped and she is just having to take the word of her colleagues that this shit has happened and of course she does she trusts you all i also i firmly believe that charnak believes that he can sort all of this stuff out but he's also like not unhappy to have a reason to delay <laughs> 
Yeah, sure. Guys, I could totally do this, but like, yeah. you know, obviously now is a bad time. My Canadian girlfriend's coming into town. Yeah. I won't be able to see you all weekend. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't know her. She goes to a different school. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, we're kicking in right when Ebus has heard this voice in her head. Um, you know, so, yeah. sort of unaware that this voice was doing much more than just being a, a, a notion in her head. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And it says to you something like, but not necessarily, but probably very much like <laughs> encourage him to enter me. And that's where we left off last episode. So what are you going to do? Evis? In my head. Who is this? Gregor. And then nothing. And then I look at, you know, I've got sort of a, I don't know that Ibis can really go very pale. Uh Because her skin's already, like her skin's like red, but it's not, you know. Right. It's pink now. She doesn't, yeah, she doesn't like (laughs) blush normally, you know what I mean? Like, but there's a look in her eye that looks a little bit off. And then she looks at, Deanfa, you said Gregor could uh, talk when you were in him? Yes, I took control of his body and he was, he and I were able to have conversations. Huh. But only when I was in his body. Well, I am still... I suppose in control and able to return to his body, but I just heard his voice. You're hearing a voice now? Not anymore. It would not answer me. But, and then I just put my finger up to my lips to indicate that maybe we should, you know, not talk. We should probably head um, to the market. That was the plan. Yes? And I just nod my head and I write something down on a note and I hand it to Charnak. I can't read this. <laughs> it's just Your handwriting is terrible. <laughs> Hold on. Let me puzzle it small out. caps. <laughs> And it says, uh, I am excellent at investigating. <laughs> Are you going to roll for this? <laughs> <laughs> What's it say? It says, um, it says, I don't want him to know about this, but I have a charm fruit. Maybe eat when you take control. And I sort of. Raise one eyebrow at him and shrug. That's and that's all I'm gonna that's all I'm gonna write. I'm like <laughs> I think in his head, Charnex like Yeah, okay, but that's why you're not the thinker in this group. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, we'll we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> you have all the fruits, John, is that right? I, yeah, I have all I have all. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, so uh, idea. No. Oh, sorry, quick, quick question: the bridge that was, um, you know, several episodes discussed, several episodes ago, discussed as having been, you know, held hostage by poachers or whatever. Like people don't go that way. Is that on the way to the market? That it, it's not on the way. This is okay. that is actually going toward the mountain. So that is Got actually it. heading. You know that that road goes. After the bridge, you can go sort of due west uh, after the bridge and get and head to the trails that go up to where the dwarves are. Got it. Or okay. you can go north, and that takes you to another settlement, another county, another right. manor. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I was just trying to yeah. remember what was where. Yeah, but that is the main road for trade um, between um, the, the 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 next largest county. And this one, so so trade has been slowed there, um, 
And I, I don't remember did the did the did the Kingsman did he indicate that their men were there as well as bandits, or did he just what he just talked about like this that particular place? I just don't remember what. No, the bridge was I think in the discussions while we were at the manor. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I just gave away something. So, <laughs> apologies. <laughs> Put it out of your mind. Um, um, all right. Give me a plum, dude. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So, 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 you know, Idea has been a little bit freaked out by this, but he did see your interaction with Sheba. And, uh, and so, uh, with, you know, Charnak's interaction with Sheba earlier. And so, uh, so, you guys are all out of your reams now. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And we're walking well, while, far while behind we're them. traveling. Yeah. I think once we get to the city and are going in, so, so we he, would be in our reams, except, well, I was going to say, can, who can everybody get into their reams? Yeah. I mean, we, we can, but even okay. Ibis is going to be in Gregor. That's what I was saying. Like, yeah. I mean, I was, in, I was in Gregor. in Gregor. <laughs> no, I was in Gregor after the plum. Yeah. I think, I think this is all, all Evis will be able to do is just use Gregor for today. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But for now, you are, you are walking, following the, the cart. The reams are up in the cart, chilling out, and you guys are walking, correct? Yeah. Outside of them. And so, so I dear, um, uh, is begins to walk with you all, and he says, uh, "You know, I am not just a ream master; I am also a friend. You can share with me your struggles and your difficulties, and you can think of me as a stand-in for Zagat when she is not here." And I, I say. I appreciate that idea and we're we are happy to have a confidant such as you. And as I'm saying this, I'm making eye contact with the other guys and shaking my head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, it, the, but he says, if you run into any troubles with the reams I am training, you must let me know because I have ways of speeding their openness to your abilities that sounds like maybe something for dinfa but i have mm. i have no problems with Davmin. he is trained i know you are having trouble with the boy um there are uncomfortable ways i can speed this process he after all has been given as a part of a contract, we may do with him what we want to do to make him fit our needs, if that is what you wish. I do not believe there is any need for that yet. We are still early in the process. Let's not make any big moves yet. I I agree. I think this is just growing pains, if you will. We are feeling things out, taking the temperature of the area. Very, very well. You, as Kybers, I answer to you. Uh, just know I am excellent at the pain game. And, and he <laughs> sort of uh, knocks part of his shoulder off and catches it, and it is a rock. And he turns back and he sees the foot of uh, Splendor kind of hanging off the back of the thing and he and he like doesn't even look and he tosses the 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 rock back over his shoulder and you just hear a <laughs> half a second later ow goodness <laughs> and he says he says i can do that and more that's good to know perhaps that will come in handy if we are um in danger well, I'm not much good in a fight, but I'm very good at exacting pain. That's what I'm saying. I'd rather just turn into a stone. We will let you know if your services are acquired, idea. We appreciate you offering them. Yes, thank you. Ebis looks at Dean Faza. Has he never been in the fight before? Isn't inflicting pain exactly what you are supposed to do? <laughs> I just shake my he's head a and big shrug. rock guy, too, you think. <laughs> yes, he's imposing. 
And he sort of like slinks back off as much as a big rock man can slink. And <laughs> as he's going back, he turns around and he says, just know I am also available to you if you require my services as well. And he gets up back on the, the wagon. So are, are we approaching the city now? Yeah. I mean, you, it's a, it's a long walk. Um, and you know, it's, a you know, the way you're going, it's still, you know, it was like an hour and a half more past the, 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 um, the mill, but it, it, you, without incident, um, you, you, you make it and you can see in the distance hard at, and if you have anything you want to do before you get to the town, uh, I'll let you do that. Okay. I have three things I want to do. <laughs> I just, uh, sorry, just one, just one for real this time. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I want to do. And then you can tell me if you want me to roll anything okay. for it, but here and sort of as we're walking through the town, I want to study the people, how they're dressed, how they move, what they okay. look like. Okay. What signifies rich people versus poor people? What's the fashion among the rich people, right? I want to soak up as much of the sort of local custom as I can. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So you all will be in your reams, I suppose. Uh, How much time has gone by? Um, Since the fight, uh, two hours. Okay. So... Just multiple short rests, but we've already done everything yeah, we can for hit points rest, and everything. If you can get yourself a short rest, yeah, for sure. Well, I, I, I think we already had one. I can't get any any more. <laughs> okay, okay. Wait, short rest or long rest? Uh, short, short rest, rest. Yeah. for sure. Short rest, not a long rest. Um, uh, so you, there's not really gates. Like this is a sprawling city. Um you get the sense that it's never been the target of a military operation. Mm -hmm. Um, this is, um, the, 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 the most damage you, this place looks like it's ever, it's ever had done to it has been fires that, you know, uh, came out from something that was non hostile. Right. Uh, the city itself as you sort of come out from where the forest is, you realize the city itself is two rivers that are, that are coming in and then they sort of meet at the, at the gates of this, of this, not gates at the, at the main entrance of this town. And that, that the main entrance is just where several roads sort of um, uh, meet up as they go into the main street. Um, then the river forms down dead down the center and the main road follows that, that larger river. You immediately notice that the river to the South is a trickle and the, that's the one that you've been on. Yeah. And the river that's like more North that's coming in. Um, that one is 15, 20 feet across here and then when they enter, the riverbed is actually, you can tell there's just not as much water has, is going through this that normally does. And, um, and you are noticing things that are slightly different from other places you've spent a lot of time in is um, uh, men and women both wearing pants here. So there's not, not a dress to be seen actually. Um, and, uh, and many people are wearing, it's hot out, it's summertime. Uh, many people are actually wearing these pants that are, that they have actually curled them up and tied them off at their, at their legs. They're almost like shorts. Um, uh, some kind of short pants, short pants. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, you asked me about what, what's the difference between uh, a wealthy person and a poorer person. I'm not going to put it in those terms. I will say that there are people who have boots on and they look like they have been working. And then there are people who are wearing sandals and they look like they have been walking around and are not dirty. Right there. It's so there's definitely like a class of people here that probably traders, 
um, you know, uh, artisans, people like that who are wearing sandals and short pants and shirts. Um, uh, the one thing that is sort of like universal about the, this crew is that they are all wearing the, if they're wearing a belt, it is yellow and it is a very long belt. There's no buckles. It is uh, one of these things that's sort of wrapped around their waist two or three times and then tied in the front. Um, universal. It's just like a target rich environment for a mage hand. It's a mage saying? hand. It's like <laughs> perfect for a mage hand. Well, he said no buckles, right? So yeah, there's yeah. no buckles. It's just no, tied. you can just just, you just, just jerk it off. Um, yeah. Is yellow a <laughs> color that would be um, reflective of like livery or any sort of allegiance or the flag of this place? Is there such a thing? So you haven't seen a flag. Okay, you don't I can know. Say, hey, Gregor, what's up with the yellow belts? Yeah. That's the sign of the king. Um, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, you know, um, other places you've been, there are, there are kings, there's nobles. This feels like there's a nationalism, if that makes sense. Like, like that's, mm-hmm. that's, that is different from other places you've been. Um, and um, the streets are clean and they, they have, a uh, place for horses and carriages, which is how you your your retinue is coming in. But then they also have wooden boardwalk that's on one side of the road, uh, that's on the river side of the road. And so, it, you know, it doesn't get muddy. It's very, very nice. Um, what was the other question you had for me? Sorry, Sam. That's good. So, and this isn't just sort of laborers and people, we, we're seeing people we seem to be merchants men of leisure yes for sure this is a large enough city mm-hmm. i say city this is probably 30,000 people so this is big um it's not monterre big it's the, you know it's there it's not water deep big it's 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 um it's very big for a farming community so is it sprawling or is it fairly condensed? Sprawling. Okay. Like you're, you're way up. You were going past farms and farmhouses and then tanners and, you know, as you're getting here. But now the, the, the deep, the center part of the city is fairly dense with people bustling shops um, as you get closer and closer to a lake. Would you say the sprawl is more than like a mile? less than a mile like in your direction that you came in probably half a mile maybe like you know there were definitely once you cleared the trees there were already huts occasionally so that was a that was probably two miles so it's not like it just pops up out of nowhere like it does feel like right there's some cleared fields yes that's right that's Mm -hmm. right so what i want to do is you know splendor's riding in the covered wagon and his uh, Charnak and Splendor has been observing all of this. I would like to cast disguise self. Okay. And I would like to give myself the sort of appearance of a a wealthy foreign merchant. Okay. Right. So the idea is, you know, emulate the sort of the clothes of these wealthy traders but also put enough sort of little spins on it that it makes it look like I'm not from around here. So give me a, uh, uh, I guess a history check. Um, and I, this is going to be based on your knowledge of this realm, what a foreign trader, where they might be from. 12. So, you you just can't place the name of the kingdom but you know that very far west beyond the mountains there is another kingdom uh and it is a little bit from what you know it is a little bit more uh city and built up mm-hmm. and and has been the target of of uh, many attacks from surrounding areas over time. 
And is so it- I, I don't necessarily need to like imitate the dress of this place. Sure. I, I'm just, you know, I want to give the impression of, of wealth and importance, but not from around here. Yeah. Got it. Um, and human? then you're going to be human. Human. Form? Yeah. Okay. I, everyone, most people in the town are human. Right? Everyone you've seen is a human so far. So human. Um, and then I am going to, I'll, I'll talk to the guys and say, I'm going to keep my mouth shut and stand in the back. You can be my emissaries and speak for me. And I will simply uh, present a, uh, an impressive presence with merely my image. I believe it will give us some leverage in speaking with this Jax. Okay. Well, I think, I hope that Gregor will have some pull as well. I am beginning to doubt that. Is Gregor there? Are you guys, are you in Gregor now that you're walking in the town? I mean, I thought that was the plan before yeah, was okay. that we were in our, in our okay. reams once we got there. So if, if Jax asks, who is this man with you? Simply say he is not important. <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps that is prudent. Do you catch my meaning? I will be mysterious and yet imposing. Okay, well, I am, and, I'm happy to let you take the lead. And no, you, I will not be taking the lead <laughs> from the back. You misunderstand me completely. No, I do not. You will take the lead as you scout from the back. It is stealthy, and as it, as was, it was in history. history. <laughs> Indeed. So, so Tim, as as Charnak says this, um, you hear in your in your head. Um, the voice of uh, of Gregor, and you hear him say, "Ebus, Ebus." Yes, it is. It is. Oh, you can you can hear me. I can hear you. Yes. I, I I didn't know if you could. I've been trying to let you know. Jax is not a human. What is he? I, I don't know what the word is anywhere else. We call them garlicors. Garlicor. Does he look human? Not even a little bit. What does? Can you describe what he looks like? Will I know what he is? His name is very representative of how he looks. Jack. He has got the giant head of a garlic. And a human body that comes down from it. Okay. And <laughs> is this a normal um, type of being in Hardat? They they have they have several communities uh, in the outlying lands to the east. Um, he has he came here. I don't know when but made his way up and and has been excellent at running a marketplace for agricultural things. He can look at plants and know how many there are, know what's wrong with them, etc. He is a savant of nature. Okay. Well, th thank you <laughs> for that. Oh, so sorry, one last thing. He doesn't understand nuance. He doesn't understand nuance. Not at all. So we must be direct. Incredibly literal. Underst Interesting for a trader. <laughs> um, so I will relay that stuff to Charnak and yeah. Dinfa. Yeah. Um, it, you know, just that, uh, especially the fact that Gregor told me that um, on our way into the market. You know, without without emphasis, but with emphasis on the Gregor yeah. told me. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I I won't bother you unless I hear something outlandish going on, and I, I will do my best to straighten things up. Uh, okay. Vunk was always very annoyed when I would do this. I I'm very sorry. Did you speak with him a lot? Uh, eventually, I stopped. He was a very cruel person. Okay. 
not very avuncular. <laughs> not very avuncular, no. Um, so the marketplace is actually a floating marketplace. So these rivers go in and then there's a very small lake that's been dammed up. And it's a series of uh, piers that go out and then boats have are tied up to the these piers and oh i thought you meant like in the air for a minute i was oh, like no, 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 it's no, like no, levitating sorry. yeah no, it's, <laughs> it's like oh sweet no it's on a it's on a it's on a small man-made lake that has been uh, a, a small dam is here and basically it is very practical people bring their wares in largely on boats here and then the outer ring of the lake has people like you who have brought their things in on wagons but the wagon sales people the wagon merchants are uh the exception not the rule and they seem to be much trashier like the boat sales people have you know, uh, they they have built out their boats as stalls. They are sort of very commercial looking. Um, they are painted different colors. Um, they have signs on them in multiple different languages. Whereas the people who are coming in in covered carts, like you all, they just sort of like pull up flea market style and are selling massive amounts of things to um, to mostly wholesale. Got it. And there is a sort of a central, looks like almost like a lighthouse that is um, uh, about 60 feet um, away from any other boats. And it's two stories high and uh, it's a round building and it's about, um, I would say, 15 feet in diameter in the center, it's like very much like a, like a lighthouse. And you hear in your head, that's where the garlic or jacks is on market day. To be clear, garlic core, not garlic whore. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> garlic whore. <laughs> that's what I said. Garlic whore. <laughs> <laughs> So that HW pronunciation throws you, Sam. You got to drop the hu. Yeah. Just... <laughs> cool whip. Garlic whore. Um, <laughs> Hooer. 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 Um, all right. <laughs> <laughs> we got to go talk to that garlic hooer. <laughs> uh, Ebus will turn to the group in Gregor and say, Oh, we want to find Jax in the tower over there. Lead the way. Points toward the lighthouse. Yeah, I follow. All right. And I guess we just peruse the market as we walk through. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, any magical swords for sale? (laughs) (laughs) You know, this is almost exclusively agricultural products commodities yeah Yeah. occasionally there will be someone who you know is there selling like for lack of a better word let's just call it loot shit that doesn't look like it belongs together but like except that maybe they were belongings of somebody so like someone would be selling like um uh a a shovel and also some clothes and you know um uh, a knife and so but it's like it's like that kind of stuff it's sort of flea markety and and then fruits vegetables salted meats the clothes only have a few holes in them and some <laughs> yeah, right. minor stains <laughs> yeah um is is this would it be a situation where we might find salves or potions that could have been put together yeah i mean i think if you want to sort of walk around the the marketplace some i mean you could you can kind of like go almost straight to the lighthouse in the center um from the sort of the main the main boardwalk that's over the water the main pier um but there's these offshoots from that that sort of go and meander around in these sort of floating trails where the boats are tied up to it so like you know the wider area is definitely like higher probably costs more for people to 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 be there selling 
And then the smaller areas are sort of like just, you know, random shit like uh, along the way. But if you want to go and do some shopping, I'm happy to let you go and look and find what you're looking for. Um, Again, everything's kind of bulk. So you're not seeing people who are selling like tinctures and things like that. It's like, it's like if you need, you know, um, uh, snapping cap mushrooms for a spell, someone's selling them by the pound, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. or that sort of thing. All right. And if I'm remembering correctly, our plan was to go to Jack's to talk to him to get an inroad to the dwarves. To the dwarves. Yeah. Maybe offer ourselves as protection for a caravan or something. Um, well, if you guys are okay walking straight through, I think I'm fine with that, but let me know. Well, if I, if I, I require no mushrooms. Yeah. If I, if I see that (laughs) I have to like put things together to make my own potion, then I'm like, eh. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Charnak, you can get anything you want for the kind of stuff that you would normally do, but like intoxicants or intoxicants, lubricants. Yeah, it will all require you know um, some level of of uh, botanical r- reduction. Knowledge. You know, cooking, um, combining no, that sort of everything thing. Everything here is way too common to be of interest to me. Okay, okay, all right, sounds good. Okay, so the main the main pier, um, occasionally there's a guard. Again, the yellow uh, belt that you know, they're wearing. Um, when you're heading out at first, they give you no mind. When you get about 20 feet away from the lighthouse, one guy sort of who's holding a halberd um, sort of extends his left arm and with his halberd, you know, sitting on the ground and it sort of just makes it into a V with his body. And he says, is where do you think you're going? We came to parlay with Jax. Is he expecting you? I don't believe he is. Uh, what are your names? I'll go relay the message. Gregor went. Went manor. How about you back there, foreigner? I am I am looking off into space as though I expect my underlings to handle this minor inconvenience for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I believe you are referring to me. I am Bosk. Okay. You're a big boy. Indeed. You all have quite a bit of weapons. And? There are bandits about. We journeyed far to come speak to Jax. All right. Let me go see. I got Gregor of Went Manor. Busk. Someone. And you, foreigner. No. You. He is with me. You only speak to me. Does he not speak the common tongue of Hardat? He does not. <sighs> All right. So he waves to someone down the pier who you've already passed. And the guy comes back and uh, this guard that you were talking to says, uh, wait here with him. Uh, yes, sir. And so this guard goes and disappears into the lighthouse for a, a minute or two. And he, the guard who comes up with you, with you all, he says, yeah, you guys, uh, you guys not from around here, huh? Not that far. Went, went manor. That's, uh, that's out. And he points in the direction that your the manor is. He says, that, that's, that's, that's you all up that, that, that way. It is. In the in the dark forest. Does that sound right? Yeah. It's true they got witches over there and they got they got uh I heard they had um in that swamp that's there, I heard they got uh they got some kind of beast that lives there that eats eats children when they go fishing. Is that true? <laughs> oh, we have lost many children. <laughs> You, you believe children's tales. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, I, I, I don't know. I've been here my whole life. I, I, I've never gone that far east. Well, then you know nothing. I mean, hard at city is the frontier, as far as I'm concerned. It's hard enough being out here. The other guard comes back and he says, Rojay, get get out of here. All right. And he's carrying a big a big bucket, a uh, big um, uh, woven basket, actually. It's not a bucket. Giant. Uh, probably four feet across and six feet high. And he says, I need you to put everything dangerous in here. Weapons, shield, anything you got that can be used uh, against against Jax. He doesn't like anything hostile in his in his building. How do we know we get this back? I'll stand right here with it. I'm not going anywhere. That's not how the market works. So, can I clarify something about disguise self here? Yes. It up. Because it says, um, you make yourself, including your clothing, armor, weapons, and other belongings on your person, look different until the spell ends. Okay. So, you know, if I've got a bow slung over my back, can disguise self just make it look like I don't? Yeah. I mean, I could say you... You, it's dangerous because if it hits something, you know, it's going right. to, you know, um, but you know, you, maybe you have a backpack on that's got shit in it. Um, something like that. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, yeah. That makes sense for about the same shape. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll, I'll accept that. Yeah. Um, Gregor will put his short sword. I think that's what he had. Right. Um, yeah. Put the short sword into the mm-hmm. basket. And then what do you have? Busk. I've got a longbow. I've got a halberd. And I've got that <laughs> new knife. You're just like, you, and you're you're putting it in, right? You're yeah, putting I'm it just all putting in. it all in. I'm just kind of hey, yeah. Let me ask you guys a question. I feel like this is something I know already. What languages do you guys have? Uh, halfling, common, and goblin. I've got an infernal. I've got a common and celestial. You don't have goblin, and and, and goblin. And goblin. Oh, you have okay. goblin too. Okay. So we all have goblin. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to say in goblin, I can't believe this many people would be trying to kill some garlic headed traitor. <laughs> 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 what are they so paranoid about around here? No idea. We're not supposed to cause problems. And then I'll, uh, in what I'll make it sound like the goblin is kind of broken. Uh huh. For outward purposes, and say, uh, he not understand indirect comment. Don't use nuance. Be straight and put your shit in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> and the and the guard and guard just kind of he's like, he's, did he say he wants us to shit in the basket? <laughs> God damn it, John Mac. The guard is, is like looking at you guys super suspiciously now, and he says, Where'd you say you're from again? Went Manor. What's that language you're talking? It I, sounds like something from the East or something. I'm trying to learn. As as I said. This one does not know the common tongue. Ask him if all guards in Hardat City are this nosy, or just him. Are all guards in Hardat City this nosy, or is it just you? And the guard kind of steps back and he says, Listen, I got one job here. Keep the peace at the marketplace. That's it. Well, I gave you I gave you my weapons. What more do you want? I want to know where he's from and if he's not going to cause the, an anti-peace in my in my <laughs> in my market. He's not going to cause an anti-peace. I said he's with me. I don't know you. Also, we we're, we're dressed nice, right? Yeah, you're dressed nice. Yeah. I mean, look right, at him. On, he doesn't man. even we're... look like he could 
It looks like I could blow on him and he'd fall over. Well, We're respectable people here to spend money. Yeah. Right? Like, listen, don't be surprised by what you find in there. <laughs> <laughs> we already know what we're going to find in there. We came a long All right. way. All right. I'm just saying, he doesn't, he doesn't, he didn't wear his robes when he's in the lighthouse. You're going to see, you're going to see Jax. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Clo- cloves and all. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hand him a gold piece. All right. Take it off your character sheet. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> right. Now, oh, let me ask this. You, are there any strong smells emanating from the building? There are. It's so as you get closer, you know, the smell of brackish water from the from the man-made lake really starts to subside and it is not a garlic smell at all. But it is a very strong iron smell, like blood, iron blood, dirt smell, like mixed in. Um, the you you open the door; it has a, a a center knob, so it's not on the it's not on the side; it's like on the very center. And when you turn it, you hear like large locking mechanism sort of moving behind the door and. It opens up and there is a large semicircled desk uh, on one wall that sort of takes up the entire, like an entire half of the, of the, the ground floor here. There's a stair that is a spiral stair that's in the very center going up. And there is a man coming down the stairs regular looking feet he's got on the pants of the sort of uh wealthy looking people he's got the yellow belt on that's the first two things you see he's wearing boots and then you see him he has to sort of hold still as he tilts his head to make his head fit down this spiral staircase the head is huge his head is extends out past his shoulders um and it is a looks like a flowering garlic it is white there are instead of having hair on top it's like almost like at the neck the garlic's cloves are opening and it's like a like a victorian collar almost but it's part of his body um and uh and he descends and he sees you and he says, I don't know you. Who are you? And why have you come to speak to me? Hello, Jax. My name is Gregor. Are you a wind? Are you Gregor, I, son? I am. Okay. And who are the others? And why have you come? Bosk, would you care to fill him in? We are with, we are with Gregor. We've come with interest from outside this city. Well, all things that are not inside this city are outside this city. I assume you are talking about the person who is you come, who have you come on behalf of? You say, are you with, with the winds? We are with the winds. I do not know your face. My name is Bosk. I now know your I name. I protect this one, Hampton. Hampton? I am, I am cleaning my fingernails with a knife. Hampton? Oh. With a knife? Did my men not take your knife? <laughs> with, a, with a small pen knife, come on. Okay. <laughs> Hampton, hello, welcome. I, I nod to him. What is it you want to do here? What is it you need Jax for? You come to buy a berth 
in the in the lake? Well, there are some issues that we've had. We have had some dealings with the Wentz in the past, but there seem to be some issues with some production. We may want to speak to the dwarves. Which dwarves do you speak of? Uh, these to the to the north, Tom. Uh, uh, there to the west, or sorry, north, south, east. Yeah, west. There to the, the west. The dwarves to the west. The ones in the mountain. Yes, yes. The Ankerstein dwarves, then. Yes, those dwarves. What is it you want to do with them, and why would you come to me? Why don't you just go west? Young young men. Well, the roads are long, rather dangerous. We were hoping perhaps we could join one of your caravans. We are quite formidable. We could be good protection. I have not sent caravans to the dwarves in many, many years. They sometimes come here to buy from me and use the marketplace. I have not seen them in nigh on eight months. What is the danger you speak of? But why have you not seen the dwarves? Perhaps they do not need farming accoutrements. Do you do, do not, not have know. any trading, trade dealings with the dwarves whatsoever? I, I don't know what you have been told about me and my marketplace. I am the owner of the market. I do not trade goods. But you are the owner. Own you are goods. the owner of the market, which means you know everything yes. that comes in and out. The market itself does not thrive off of trading with other markets. Well, it does, but I follow the god of the 10%. Have you heard of the god of the 10%? Please enlighten us. Everyone comes when they make a sale. They set aside 10%. That 10% is Jax's. Well, I am the purveyor of the god of the 10%. When the dwarves come to buy, 10%. When they come to sell, 10%. That is all I do. And business is good. Hmm. Business could be better, but that is always true. Why could it be better? The demand for wheat is high. The supply of wheat is low. I assume perhaps these are the troubles you are coming here about, Went. They are troubles indeed. And so you think the dwarves could help you with this? It is a theory. We have... Uh... Need for more water. Now oh, the water, yes. yes. You see the lake? If you look out there, we are at least eight feet down from what we once were. So perhaps, what have the dwarves to do with this? Well, our river runs from their mountains. Is it afraid? Afraid? Because yes. it runs. Huh. Yes. <laughs> I've never known water to be afraid. It always seems to find the low point, doesn't it? Yes, it is brave. It jumps from heights without trepidation. Very true. Well, what is it you need from Jax? You say you want to join my caravan. I have no caravan. Do you know of one? I know not a caravan, but you say you would make this trip, but you want the protection of a caravan or to be the protection of a caravan, but would you be the caravan yourself? Could you be messengers, is what I'm saying? Could you deliver things to them? Of course. That is something we could do, yes. I may know, I may know. I may know someone who is aims to sell something to them up mountain. 
he would not part with these things easily. You may have to buy them from him. And I would get my 10%, of course. And then you could deliver them to the dwarves and they could pay you for your troubles, I suppose. What is, uh, who should we speak to? I can bring him here. His name is Heathcliff. He is a librarian. And librarians offer agricultural goods? Oh, no, absolutely not. They mostly deal in books. Where are you from? Do you not read? Scarcely. That is very sad. A book can open up your world. It has opened up mine many times. So, a librarian. I know not the dealings. Let me bring Figure off, and he will bring Heathcliff. If you would like to meet him, you may make the deal here in the lighthouse. Now that I have heard Jax speak and gotten a good look at him, do I have any information about what kind of being he is? Give me a nature check. Natural 20. Hell yeah. That's wow. 25. <laughs> so not only do you know that he is not of nature, you know that the only garlic cores you've ever heard of were all created by powerful, evil wizards and sorcerers cursing uh, uh, humans. And <laughs> okay. in fact, it's been a very, um, uh, and you sort of rack your brain for an, a, fair, a particular story and you just, it's hard, you can't, it's hard to come up with a particular story, but you know there are stories of People, this is this is not a race. This is a curse. This is a curse. Yes, um, but that you have this information that there are many of them to the east is, you know, that's weird. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what um you got from Gregor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um and uh and you immediately you 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 definitely have the feeling there must be a powerful sorcerer or wizard who is awful that is mm -hmm. out to the east um gotcha. that's 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 for sure how you would take that with a 25 nature check you sort of get it yeah um okay second question Anything in his demeanor or his way of speaking, can it tell me about what his origin might have been before he was a garlic person? Um, so give me a, I, can, I guess, an insight check on yeah. this. I'm thinking particularly of other languages he might yeah. speak, right? Other, could he have been an elf, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay, you said insight? Yeah. Eleven. So I will say this. You know enough in your experience of taking over Kybers that voices do change when shapes of heads change. Mm -hmm. And that it's hard to tell from I mean, not voice. in my case, but yes. Yes. Yeah. It's hard to tell from <laughs> voice. Mm-hmm. But there is an accent that tells you he probably speaks another language, and the language that you are tell me the languages you speak. Okay, hold on a sec here. Uh, common, draconic, elvish, gnomish, goblin, under common. Okay, you 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 have a great knowledge of languages. Um, I'm going to give you one more role for this. It's not one of okay. those languages that you hear um, sort of okay. in his voice, um, but you do hear a slight accent from something that you've heard kind of before. Um, let's see. What's the right thing? I guess history. This will be a history, history? check. Yeah. 
19. So it is, it's slight. It's the way he makes S's, the way he makes T's, the way he kind of combines his P's and his B's a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, This is abyssal. Like he Mm. definitely also speaks abyssal, perhaps his first language. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I'm keeping this all to myself for right now. Okay. All right. Yeah, I I considered picking up one of those demonic languages, but it didn't seem like it was going to be. It, I have in, I have infernal, and this is useless for me. So, okay, <laughs> it might it may be it may be maybe not. I mean, infernal, and I feel like infernal and abyssal are like Spanish and Italian. Yes. Right. <laughs> but but I will say I don't think that Ebus's mind is tuned in to whether or not this person sure. has a slight accent from the underworld um, right. right now. Um, I, this is what you were doing. You were listening to Ebus might hear a little bit of this if she was really tuned in the way you are to this. Also, you're a language expert. Like so, that's yeah. the yeah. other thing. It's like you yeah. you. This is something you are fo- like focused in on. You know enough abyssal. That you could probably say a few things to this person, right? Like you, you, you're a language person. Um, I will have figured out. Get the get the Heathcliff. He is in the boat over, uh, over on the on, uh, on the on the southern quadrant of the lake. And so he does. He calls out to figure off, and figure off comes in and sees you with your knife in your hand. He goes, ah. I missed that one. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I, yeah. And, and okay. he takes off to get to get Heathcliff. And, um, and the garlic whore says, do you need a, would you like some, some tea of some kind? I, I am making right now. I, I nod from the back. Okay. Very well. And he, uh, pulls stools out for himself and for two of you. And he says, "Uh, the other one is upstairs. Uh, Do you mind standing? Guard, do you mind standing? No problem. Okay. So, so tell me, uh, uh, oh, wait, you've only spoken to him in common. Is that right? Yeah. Who, me? All of you. All All of of us. All of you, yeah. So I, I do note something off about about uh, about you, you guard, um, and Gregor went. I I don't know how we've never met. Why is it we've never met before? I'm not sure I had business with you directly. Wait. I have also traveled different directions. Your your father's people do had been sending in quite a well, relatively large load of wheat every 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 growing season, and I have not seen that level of wheat coming from you. Um, but you never were the one who who would deliver. That is odd, no? For the heir, isn't the heir of the manors usually the ones who handle that sort of business? I guess not in our home I've heard stories you have not a very happy home is that true that is a rather personal question oh I apologize is that something I'm not allowed to ask it is something I care not to answer should I take offense to that or not no oh okay I won't here here's your tea and also for you foreign trader man oh Oh, goodness. Interesting. You may have your tea. Please don't shoot me. I, um, grab the tea from him. Okay. And sniff it. And sip it. Yeah. It's, it's, a it's an herbal tea. Um, it's relatively strong. It has, it's very, um, citrusy. Um, but otherwise it's good. I mean, if you like that sort of thing, I mean, I personally don't like citrusy tea, (laughs) 
Uh, but if you like that sort of thing, it's a good one. And I, I, I look over at Hampton, <laughs> and, I, <Yeah. laughs> and I nod, and then I, and I'm, I'm, I motion it over, and I, I, I walk it over to him, never taking my eyes off of uh, Jax. <laughs> it is okay, okay, good. Um, I also won't take offense to that. Was that a taste test to see if I have poisoned you? Apparently not. Since I, I appear to be to fine. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I, I don't understand. I would not do that. You are my, this is my store. I, I want everyone to succeed to pay 10%. <laughs> <laughs> can I, um, can I do an inside check on him? Sure. Is he unnerved at all? Natural 20. You guys wow. are using some heavy rolls. We need to have a fight soon, so you can make use of these nat twenties. Uh, so twenty-two. Um, no, we only get to know everything about these garlic-headed bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think I think from what you can tell, this guy is being straight up with you. The only thing I would say is weird is that he does seem like he's a little bit important. And it seems weird that he would just like have tea with you after you come in. Um, uh, he does seem like he is holding his cards close to his vest about Heathcliff. Okay. Like he wants Heathcliff here soon kind of thing. He wants to make sure you guys don't leave before that guy gets in. And like clockwork, Heathcliff comes in. He's a very well kept mid 60s man with salt and pepper hair, beard, uh, trimmed, um, handsome, 5'8, five, 5'9, five, and uh, definitely has the, um, has the look of someone who doesn't work very hard, but still keeps himself well in shape. And Heathcliff comes in and says, says, I was summoned, and now I see there is meat and and muscle in here. Uh, Jax, are these men for the... And Jax says, just yes, here, wait, uh, before you say anything, yes, we are discussing the dwarves. And he says, oh, well, do you think they can make it past those bandits on the road? Right. Don't know, but it might be worth a try. And Heathcliff says, but the books are very, very valuable, Jax. I'm well aware. I would not expect you to bear all of the risk of this move, but uh, this is Gregor Wint of Wint Manor, and he is very large and capable looking people. I don't know about that one back there, that human, the foreigner, but he seems to control the the brute. No offense intended there, brute. Mm. Very good. I'll take your grunt to me and no offense was taken. <laughs> and uh, and Heathcliff says, uh, do they know why we would have them transporting all these books? No, I was going to leave it to you to tell them. I don't want to get in your business. Well, you see, gentlemen, the dwarves, they're trying to do new things, learn new things, and they have ordered some very expensive books from me. Uh, I don't have anyone who can bring them up. The dwarves will pay 3,000 gold for these books. I would have to pay 2,000 gold to get good people to take them up the mountain. That was the most recent bid by the king. I think the king is out of his mind if he thinks I'm going to pay soldiers to protect the road they should already be protecting. That is literal highway robbery. And then Jack says, it is not actually literal highway robbery. <laughs> it is something quite different from that. I understand, Jax. 
I can't bring myself to pay that money. So, I will tell you true. 500 gold is all these books cost me. You pay me 1,000 gold for them. And you can collect the 3,000 from the dwarves. Do you have a signed offer from the dwarves? I do indeed. And I have the, the, the list of things they want. I am not delivering all of it, but each one has, uh, has a price for each part of it. Uh, I only have books. I do, not, I do not sell masonry equipment, for instance. I'm doing another insight check while he's talking. Okay. Natural 20. <laughs> what? <laughs> Jesus. What? <laughs> this is ludicrous. Ladies and gentlemen, that is another nat 20, another uh, 22 and insight check. Um, We're just seeing through people. Just right to their yeah. heart. Their I mean, this heart. guy, look, he's clearly angry that he's getting shaken down by the cops, basically. Um, um, what else do you want to know, John? Like, what is, what is your insight? What are you looking for? I, I just, yeah, I just, I want... Is is he telling us the truth about these numbers? Yeah, yeah. Is uh, is this the truth about these numbers? Are we actually taking books? Like, he just, things just seem strange. Okay. Um, something is off about when he's describing this. Mm -hmm. The numbers seem a little bit inflated. Mm -hmm. But when he produces the the uh, basically an RFP here where like the an order an or, a, a letter outlining things that they want there are a list of 17 titles of books and the printing press that they came from and 3000 gold altogether so they want They're books not, and a printing press no 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 no, no, they want to know which edition. Uh -huh. Which edition like, this, this thing it. came from. Who printed these books. Yes. And the only thing that's not on there, it's like sort of at the bottom of the list of books, it says, all plates must be in place. Are any of the book titles particularly interesting in terms of the new direction the dwarves are trying to go? <laughs> and the mention um, of the masonry tools? So, How to damn rivers. Uh, no, so, so, so honestly... By that, Lady Dam Rivers. <laughs> that is the thing that you that you are that's that is actually interesting about this this um, piece. And then I'll get back to John's insight check and see if he has any more questions with that Nat twenty. Um, uh, but they're all over the place. Some of it's like books on fauna. There's a history of of uh, a of a kingdom that you'd never heard of. There's things, but there's only three different printing presses on here. So the only thing that these things have in common is that there's a printer in Hardat City and two different printers at the uh, Hardat Castle. So everything else is sort of like all over the place in terms of what the titles would tell you about them. Several religious books, but the items are definitely things that have to do with masonry, farming, and uh, above ground things. And like what you know about dwarves, usually they're like they like caves. They're they're they prefer mountains. Now you know enough about the world to know that there are lots of other kinds of dwarves. Um, but these are for sure hill dwarves, mountain dwarves that live in this area. They don't usually do a whole lot of farming and fishing, and there's a lot of fishing equipment, things like that. Well, clearly, if they're getting into farming and fishing, that might be a reason to say, damn a river. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. might, might we see some of these books before we agree to this? Uh, he, he was carrying a bag. He has them here. Might I see a book? Uh, sure. Here, here you go. Um, and it's the, the 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 story of of Evelyn the wine, and uh, and it's a uh, it's a it's it's all about like fermentation of of grapes and potatoes, and it's all it's basically a how to make alcohol book. Um, give me a perception check as you're flipping through. Four. 
bound to happen at some yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. Be- I was like, like, if it's a natural 20, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> it beautifully bound. Um, it seems like there's nothing. I mean, it is it is the book that they seem to ask for. And it has the printer's name uh, that's, you know, from, from Hard at City. Um, it has a year. I don't know if you remember sort of like what the year system is here, but like it's 50 years old at least. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'm going to look at the book. Um, I'm going to see if it has, it, it doesn't have like a, like a cover sleeve or anything. Yeah, no. Okay. And then I'm going to hand it to Charnak. And the, the only other part of the net 20 is I just want to know if they seem nervous looking at each other while, while we're in this room. Um, the only looks that they made was when Heathcliff came in and he saw you busk, mm-hmm. he was excited, mm-hmm. relieved even. Like, you look like a badass. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gregor went, you know, makes him, like, he's unclear what this is. They don't know what to make of of the disguised noble from somewhere else. Like, you don't really look like an adventuring party, but you look like someone who could handle yourself. Mm-hmm. I got you. All right, so I'm going to speak up for the first time. Are you, Jax, also the keeper of the contracts for the marketplace? Keeper and enforcer? Yes, I am. And I do I do make um, the hard decisions around here, for sure. I, I trust that a verbal contract made in your presence is sufficiently binding. It, it is, but... I do prefer to have it on leaf. Um, do we have access to a thousand gold via Gregor? <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. Like, <laughs> I don't have any money on a character sheet, but I also don't have Gregor on my character sheet. So, right. Um, I, I will say that you could get a thousand gold probably at Went Manor. I will say between you all right now you probably only have a few hundred gold mm-hmm. but idea has all of your gold so idea is your you mean of the few hundred that we could put together or no he has he, he is the one who zagat said whatever gold you need uh, okay idea has the gold okay he's our atm we just have yes. to but it's probably back at the manor well no he's he's close He's here. He's, no, he's in he's this. He's in town. Gold. He's not leaving gold back at the. It's manor. in the wagon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we will accept the risks of the road, but not the risks of the transaction. Should the dwarves choose not to honor their contract, we would ask that you agree to buy the books back from us at the price you paid. And you're saying this to Heathcliff. He to Heathcliff. And asking Jax to, ver- you know, witness. Should should we not also receive something for the troubles? No, me, this is merely insurance. Yes, 10% for travel, if they do not honor their agreement. And I give a, a wink to, uh, to Jax. <laughs> is there something wrong with your eye? Uh, no sorry that does not seem fair to me I will let Heathcliff speak for himself but if you are worried about this perhaps you leave the thousand gold with me and if in two days time you do not return with the books I will give Heathcliff the full thousand gold and Heathcliff looks up and says, I agree to that. Jax is a man of his word. How far are the dwarves? The dwarves are. Oh, that's me asking if you. If you're but... walking. Oh, no. <laughs> well, you don't know. I mean, like, right. if, if, you're, if you take the bridge, it is a good day. Then two days seems too short. 
Well, you go, and if they don't honor their contract, you come back. Mm, and if we're, it were that easy, some would have made the trip already. We will That's encounter true. hardships. Four days. And Jack says, do not bicker over the days. How about a week? Come back here within a week, and at the end of the week, and and uh, um, Heathcliff says, well, but I, it is my stock. I do have people to pay for that one and that one and that one. He says, um, give me 50 gold first. I keep the 50 gold no matter what. And I will replace the 950 gold if the dwarves do not, if you bring me all the books back. Is that acceptable? This is acceptable. Very well. And Jack says, do you have the gold with you now or do you have to go get it? We did not carry it into this uh, building. No, I just, I did, you know, Busk, Busk has some on him, right? I, I mean... I could probably. What's it, what's it say on your character sheet? I could you probably you just gave produce, that gold. I could produce twenty gold. <laughs> if he I've squeezes got 10, his butt I've real got, hard, for some reason I've got ten on my character sheet. I have no idea where it came from. <laughs> uh, probably probably the ice, from the, the ice sorcerer, right? Mm. Yeah, or yeah. or the bandit in the sky. Right. What, right, what, right. what do you got, Tim? I don't have anything on my character sheets. Oh, okay, because I don't remember. I mean, let's say you guys have 200 gold together right now. Okay. okay. So I just, I just, I just nod to, oh, wait a second. He's asking us for the, th- the thousand gold, not the 50. Yeah, the, the thousand. Yeah. Never mind then. Uh, uh, we will, re- we may retrieve it from our wagon. And then I, I say, uh, Busk, perhaps you could uh, gather the gold from the wagon and uh, escort our, uh, new partner here and I gesture to Heathcliff to uh, in the in the gathering and delivering of the books all right and stare at Heathcliff it's acceptable to me that does go okay and he walks with you and and once they've left I I turn to Jax and I say uh, May I discuss other business with you, Jax? Yes, of course. As you may have surmised, we uh, seek to work with the dwarves to remedy the situation with the water. That would be very, very good for business to me as well. Yes, and, and in the course of this, we may encounter significant hardship and expense. Okay. We, as an additional incentive for the completion of this task, we would ask for an honored birth here in the marketplace should the water be restored. He sits, he thinks, and he says, everyone can buy, anyone can buy a birth here. I, I wish it to be given freely as a matter of honor to the Wint family. Hmm. I'll tell you what. I will... and, and of the eight feet restored to the lake, you may consider the top foot yours as the god of 10%. <laughs> he, he says, well... The lake is not owned by anyone, not even the god of 10%, but I will do this. If you succeed in this contract, I will take the 10% of the thousand and sell you a berth for 100 gold. Normally, it is 200 gold per year, and I will give you that one year. I would ask, but one more condition. Okay. Ask. Should anyone ask how the water was restored? Merely tell them it was through the good works of Gregor Wint. I, I of course, can do that. 
Very good. Do you have scribes that will draw all of this up in a contract? Or would you prefer to keep this portion verbal alone? I, I trust you are a man of your word. I am a man of my word, but I have seen enough things go wrong with contracts without being written down that I will write this down right now. And he starts writing. He says, and you can read. Mm, in which language do you uh, transcribe? I will be writing in the language of this town. It is sometimes called common. Uh, very good, then. Very well. And he begins writing, and, and he looks over his shoulder, and he says, and this is okay, this provision, this is okay, how it is written. Yes, indeed, it all looks as we discussed. And I will, I will include the remarks in quotation marks. This is a new thing that I am bringing to the language. This hmm. is to show you said these exact words. That the top foot is Jexus <laughs> for the God of 10%. Just to get the flavor of our conversation. Uh, yes, but you must also note that that term was rejected by Jax for the lake belongs to no one. Oh, I have already written. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and he says, I will have your mark and I will have your mark as... Witness, uh, so went. Okay. All right, so you guys finalize the thing, and he says, um, I uh, unfortunately cannot waive the three gold cost of a contract. I Nor would I expect you to. Very good. And now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to sign, I'm going to sign my name. Hampton. Uh-huh. Uh never mind. I'm not. Okay. I mean I'm I'm gonna sign it. I'm just gonna make I'm gonna sign it Hampton. Okay. All right. I was I was considering attempting to throw some abyssal on there as well and just see, okay. see how <laughs> yeah. it did. Uh, was like, right. not time to not time to antagonize Jax yet, potentially. It is a pleasure working with someone who is so precise. It is Nice to be respected. Thank you so much. And um, Heathcliff... Uh, have we drawn up the contract for Heathcliff as well? Uh, yes, it is here. And he, he it's, it's already done yes, as well. Yes, he may countersign when he returns. And Heathcliff, you get to the, you get to the, um, the wagon and idea... Uh, oh, oh, wait, so... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Before we cut away... I, I, I turn to Ebus. <laughs> uh, does all look in accordance with your wishes, my lord? I look it over. I nod. It does. Very good. Uh, well, it, it it will all be signed then. And uh, and so, um, when Heathcliff gets to the 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 wagon. He has brought one of his men who is carrying a large, large, an even larger bag of books. So Heathcliff only had four or five books in his <laughs> sack when he came. 17 books. Um, he checks them against the, uh, the register that the dwarves sent. And uh, he's satisfied. You're satisfied that these are the right books. An idea hands you a sack of gold. And he's, an idea says... Twelve hundred gold, Sir Busk. All right, thank you. He says, "I'm taking a note of it. You will be replacing this gold." I understand. <clears throat> and all right, and so, so you head back. You deliver the gold to the garlic core, and. Oh, There's a piece sorry. of me that's like, hey, we should talk to the uh, like masonry equipment guys, see if they want to get in on this. But then I was like, oh, wait a second. We're not really a trading caravan. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. We're just going to change this podcast into... Uh, yeah. we're, just, we're just trying to get up to those dwarves, <laughs> maybe yeah. make a little money in the meantime. But like, eh, I, don't, I don't need to negotiate with no masonry equipment nah. <laughs> salesman. <laughs> Uh, so Jax doesn't want to show you where he's going to put the gold, but he says, Jax, drop another contract. Yeah. I, 
I assure you it will be very safe. Good luck, men. I need to see the two of you shake on it. And he says, uh, I believe this is between Wint and Heathcliff. And I go over and shake Heathcliff's hand. And sh- Heathcliff shakes your hand and he says, he says, you are so young. Please, please don't die. <laughs> I have not died yet. But you are so young. Uh, there are many days ahead of you. And I will tell you this, now that we've shaken, now that the contract has been signed, the last contract I hired was to send someone to find the books. And it was a caravan that was murdered, and they left the books and took the other things that were sent. Do not take the main roads if you can avoid it. I think Kingsmen are doing this. You have evidence of this? No. And it's just something that me and the other traders believe in our hearts. They hate merchants. They think they're above it. But they're not above it. Hmm. This guy would probably blame anything on Kingsman, but it does make a certain kind of sense. <laughs> yeah. Now he's super butthurt about the about being having being forced to pay big money to mm. do these things. Yes. With your collective experience, would you be able to show us areas on a map where activity is particularly Hard. Yeah. He says, do you have a map? Do we have a map? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't Does think Gregor do. carry a map? No, I don't think Gregor carries a map of the, of the surrounding areas. Um, the, the, the garlic horror says, I can show you a rudimentary map. It does not have everything labeled, but it has the rivers and most of the trails here. And he sort of looks for things and he rolls out something that looks about right and he's and he says do you uh, do you know and heathcliff says well the real problem is that the river is not navigable and he says he points to it he says we would always go up river and that's dangerous because you know where they're coming from but even more dangerous are the bridges and he points to the bridge that you know about already mm mm-hmm. He says, many people have died here. Many people. And he says, and he points a little bit further on in the same road. He says, also here, there's two mountains that come, come down together. There's about a hundred feet between the palisades of these two mountains that come down. Many people have died there as well. And this is the river that's not flowing very well. That's right. Yeah. 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 It seems as though Hardat City is under siege. We are fine in all other directions. It is the dark wood. I'll tell you now, there are some people out there on them boats that believe Went Manor's behind all of this. I don't believe it. <laughs> Kingsmen. Well, I do not believe I would be speaking out of turn to say that my lord Gregor Went believes that all men should be free to trade and make an honest living without having to pay exorbitant tithes to the king's men or have their trades stopped, their agents murdered. That is great to hear. And the garlic horse says, Although, let's keep in mind that the, the god of the 10% must be paid. Yes, the god of the 10%, not the god of the 66%. Here, here. Here, here. here. <laughs> and he says, let's, let's seal this with a, with a drink of fermented 
juice, shall we? And he pours you all a glass of wine. He says, to the God of the 10%. To the God of the 10%. 10%. All right. All right. So, are you staying in town at all after this? Are you heading straight up to the dwarves? Probably want to get a long rest. Mm-hmm. Okay. In, in town in... or back at Went Manor? Okay. No, find get an inn there. Get a good night's sleep. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess we'll be, we're basically t- going right back out on the road we came in on. Yeah, right back. You can, you can make it back to Went Manor today. Okay. And then head out in the morning. I think that makes sense. Except we did, would we then have to cross that dangerous bridge? That's um, after Went Manor, right? Yeah, that that's beyond Went Manor. So okay. you'd have to, there's, you're going to have to figure something out, whether it's going to the bridge or, or. Well, let me ask this. We never landed on whether we thought that spot on the road that we had a dangerous premonition about was actually dangerous. I think we um, I think we looked and found that the, there was nothing there. Nothing. There was no there was one nothing there. there. Yeah. yeah. We went back on the yeah. road and we walked back in the opposite direction and found uh, there was nothing nothing yeah. there. That's right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Then let's go to Wint Manor. Okay. Tom's saying this like we should do it and that it'll be okay. <laughs> it'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean um, you or we have no reason to expect anything bad would, right. would attempt that's, to accost us. That's right. That's right. And nope. if so, frankly, we're cocky enough to feel like we could handle it. And Ebus has no recollection of any of the things that right. were supposed to happen in town, so no objection. Yeah, there. and and you do you you do pass a monastery in town, and you are sort of interested, Ebus. Um, but you, we don't want any of that nonsense. You <laughs> make your way right past it, and you head on the road. You are unmolested. You make it back to Wint Manor. You are able to collect yourselves, get a long rest, and Huzzah. you are all level three. Ooh. 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 All right. Yes. Good you negotiation. Had some good <laughs> fights. You had some good negotiation. Um, on the bonus, we'll do the level up. So uh, this is for the 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 patrons now. I'm going to tell you there's some there's some really nice things that are coming in this level up, um, and uh, we're going to talk a lot about like the way we're. I'm trying to balance these classes, this new class here, some of the abilities you're going to get, and the opportunity to sort of specialize as as Kybers is coming up too. So very exciting. Any any questions for me before we head off to the to the bonus? No, I think that's great. That's exciting. <laughs> awesome. All right. All right. Good work, everybody. All right. All right. We'll see you uh, in a week. All right. Yeah. Thanks for thanks coming. For coming. Thanks for coming. Week on Patreon. Two weeks if you're not. Thanks for coming by. <laughs>